All right. So uh, since we are in the chapter of meridional structures, uh, we come back to uh, humidity. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, that a little bit uh, before, but we'll revisit it. So here is our temperature again, uh, warm tropics uh, extending into the subtropics and then uh, cold uh, higher latitudes and of course temperature dropping off uh, with uh, height uh, uh, up to the uh, tropopause and then you get uh, the stratosphere, right? So how does moisture relate to that? We go back to our Clausius Clapeyron. Remember the exponential dependence of moisture on uh, temperature. And we had seen this uh, zonal average specific humidity. That is the amount of water vapor per kilogram of uh, uh, air. So you have grams per kilogram uh, higher near the surface and Everywhere it is higher near the surface than above and it is higher in the tropics compared to the higher latitudes because temperature drops off this way and this way. That's not uh, a big surprise uh, at all, right? So the numbers are, are fairly modest here uh, uh, up to about uh, 18, 20 uh, grams per kilogram. So you can see uh, that's a fairly small uh, number. Nonetheless, we know that uh, when it condenses and releases heat, it drives lots, most of the circulation uh, that we know of. Um, so that's our uh, specific uh, humidity, uh, density of the water vapor. We are dealing with uh, unit uh, volume. So instead of mass over mass, we can just do density over density, where rho is the density of the air, which is density of the dry air plus water vapor, right? So it's rho v divided by rho v plus rho d, where rho d is the density of dry air. So this is the zonally average saturated specific humidity uh, Q star. Looks a little bit different than this, obviously. Uh, why? Saturated means for a given temperature, we have completely loaded up uh, the moisture to be uh, as much as it can uh, hold at that temperature, right? So you can see that uh, just quickly, the number here is 18 at the surface. It's gone down to about uh, 20, so 16, 18, 20, 22 or so, right? So obviously saturation, uh, saturated specific humidity is going to be uh, greater than uh, mostly specific humidity because specific humidity uh, depends on how much moisture is available, how much is being advected in, how much is being advected out, uh, and so on and so forth. Saturated is potentially what it can hold if you had uh, kept pumping moisture till it reached saturation. Okay, so zonal average saturated specific humidity again, Q star is def defined as saturated water vapor pressure divided by RVT. So again, it's rho V divided by rho, where rho V is now at saturation. So we are just writing it as R over RV. So we took R up, RV down. Uh, T cancels out because the same temperature of the air. And ES divided by P, so this is the uh, vapor pressure of such satu at saturation divided by total pressure of the air. Again, remembering uh, law of partial pressure, P is going to be ES plus ED, where E is uh, dry air or water vapor, right? So you can see the structure again. Saturation uh, looks exactly like specific humidity except for the numbers, but you can see that the uh, Numbers are very low at high latitudes, higher in the tropics, higher, uh, lower in uh, the latitudes. So we talked a lot about convection in the last chapter. So we'll have to explain why uh, the, the, the humidity is not high here, even though we kept saying convection is being bringing up uh, water vapor into the upper atmosphere, right? And here ES obviously is a constant A in pressure in its times e to the beta t, where beta is a constant also, right? That's our clausius clapeyron equation. So we defined specific humidity and saturated uh, specific humidity uh, so that we can define this relative humidity as a percentage. So it's basically what we had defined before. It's the specific humidity, what is present in a given parcel of air, divided by saturated specific humidity or 
how much water vapor it would have if it was completely saturated for that temperature. So it's cube over Q star times 100%, times 100, right? So, so relative humidity is typically talked about in percentages. So when we say uh, surface is almost always at 80 to 85% relative humidity, that means for a given temperature, remember temperature is warmer here and colder here, near the surface it's almost saturated. It's almost 85% uh, of the saturation. Okay, so the figure looks very different than here, right? That's why uh, relative humidity gives you very different information. So relative humidity near the surface uh, is almost at 80% uh, even at higher latitudes at cold temperatures. But you remember that saturated, saturated uh, specific humidity is low at low temperatures. Hence, specific humidity can be low as well and you can still get relative humidity to be 85%. So 85% here doesn't have the same meaning as 85% here in terms of absolute humidities or saturated specific humidities. Okay, why do we get a dip here? I think we haven't done the circulation yet, but you will see that the convection is pumping up moisture and increasing relative humidity with height here, but that air that sinks, we will see this circulation soon as the Hadley circulation, but I think you've already been exposed to it somewhere where warm air rising, taking water vapor with it, expanding, cooling, creating these monstrous clouds that we talked about, air diverging towards the poles and sinking. Where it sinks, uh, the air is drier because as the air is rising, it's getting saturated and raining out, so it's losing the water vapor and it's diverging. Low humidity air is diverging and sinking. Sinking air is compressing and heating up, so its saturated specific humidity goes up. So then relative humidity drops off because it has low specific humidity. So Q is low, Q star increases because sinking air is slowly warming, so Q star goes up, so relative humidity uh, decreases. Okay? Net effect, a long story short, you get this kind of nice distribution which is somewhat of a tracer for uh, the circulation, the Hadley circulation, and then uh, there are other reasons why uh, we have a structure here which has uh, to do with uh, cells as well, but we will see soon that those cells are much weaker. So that's uh, uh, the part of the story, so I'll continue this uh, again uh, to explain in terms of convection because that's worth uh, looking at why uh, relative humidity uh, is lower uh, upper in the upper atmosphere despite convection taking humidity up. I already said it in words but let's look at a figure to try to understand it just a little bit better.